Some manifestations of hallucinations defy any known medical reasons. A case in point is that of an Oregon woman who called the police one day because she believed some people were trying to take off the top of her car. When the police arrived, they found nothing and had to leave. However, she called again and told the cops that the intruders were back. The police visited and decided to check her into a hospital as they were sure that she was hallucinating. After her treatment, things took a rather bizarre turn. A woman who lived with her began to experience similar hallucinations. One of the staff at the hospital where she was checked in also began to have hallucinations, and two of the police who were part of the investigation began to also show symptoms. I guess hallucinations have no respect for the law. A lot of professionals before now believe that only mentally challenged people hallucinated. However, recent reports have shown perfectly healthy people experience hallucinations at all levels. Yes, hallucinations have been known to occur from mild to outright bizarre and almost fearful levels. Experts explain hallucinations as the frontal lobe not living up to its responsibility and taking a brief holiday. When this happens, the not-so-experienced intern, the sensory cortex, takes over, and from this point, things can get quite hazy. In some cases, factors like lack of sleep, grief, stress, or trauma might be responsible for these misplaced job functions between the frontal lobe and sensory cortex. However, as we would get to see in this video, some extreme cases defy the mere explanation of a malfunctioning brain part. Before we get to those stories, it might interest you to know that hallucinations occur in various ways, from visual hallucinations where you see objects, people, or patterns that are not real, to hallucinations that affect the sense of smell. A person who has experienced this may perceive odors or fragrances that no other person around can. Other forms of hallucinations include sensations involving the taste bud, or cases where people hear all kinds of noise, or even voices. People have also been known to express feelings that suggest that someone else was touching their skin, or bugs were crawling on their bodies. Generally speaking, hallucinations commonly occur with illnesses like dementia, schizophrenia, or delirium. In other cases, substance abuse like psychedelic drugs, may be responsible for them as well, as stress, fatigue, high fever, or some related illnesses. All five of them were tested, but the test revealed nothing. There were also no cases of contamination from probable drug use or some other toxic substances they were exposed to. While it's easy to say that the hospital staff and the woman she lived with were likely affected because of some emotional ties, the same cannot be said for the police officers, who shared no close relationship with the woman. Sometimes, diagnosing and classifying hallucinations may be difficult in some quarters, as certain cultures welcome acts that would otherwise be referred to as hallucinations. For instance, certain cultures advocate hearing from the dead. This bizarre tradition may cause those who believe this to assume that it's a departed loved one trying to reach out to them, and not to seek help when required. Other cultural and religious affiliations tolerate and encourage the use of psychedelic drugs that end up in trips and hallucinations. For instance, peyote, which is a hallucinatory substance, forms a very important part of the worship style of a particular South American sect. The plant is usually ingested by the priest before he offered his prayers on behalf of his people. It's on record that the effect of the drug kept him alert from dusk till dawn. Foodies may also have been victims of hallucinations as a result of the kind of cuisine they ate. Tourists beware of what you expose your taste buds to. The Sarpa Salpa is a kind of fish in the Mediterranean waters. This beautiful looking fish, however, has a dark side to it. Certain parts of this fish, if eaten, will bring untold suffering to the eater. Terrible nightmares have been known to occur when the forbidden parts of the fish were eaten. People who eat this particular fish must be so careful, so as to not be caught up in La La Land or Zombie Land. In some recent studies, people who live around Salem Town famous for its witchcraft trials between February 1692 and May 1963, are beginning to say that hallucinations may have been complicit in the execution of some of the women at the time. You see, the kind of bread they ate at the time was made out of rye. Because of the inability of the people of that age to preserve bread or food, it is possible that this bread developed molds, and those who consumed it may have been reacting to food poisoning which produced muscular spasms, crawling sensations, or vomiting. These reactions at the time may have led the strictly religious and cultural sect to tag some of the people involved as witches. At this point, I'm sure you're beginning to see that hallucinations 
hallucinations are not just typical reactions to some drugs. While we like to go with the explanation of the frontal lobe stepping aside, some cases have observers scratching their heads for lack of a proper explanation. For instance, the doppelganger form of hallucination has been known to occur in mentally healthy people. This type of hallucination happens when people perceive that they see someone that looks like them, or see themselves in the mirror, but believe it is not them, but someone else staring back at them. In some cases, some people have said that they felt the presence of someone else in the room with them. People also have different reactions, interpretations, or perceptions of hallucinations. In an experiment carried out on people suffering from schizophrenia, the supervisors of this experiment wanted to know how different people interpreted hallucinations in the end. The patients from the United States had terrible experiences and had nothing good about their experiences. People from India and Ghana, however, said their hallucinations had positive effects on them as it made them able to interact with people from another realm who could provide them with advice and guidance. It might help you to know that research shows that 1 in 20 people usually have had hallucinations at some point in their lives, so don't feel terrified if you have them. Do not also allow shame or some sort of stigma to stop you from seeking help if you need to. You do not want to go from a seemingly harmless brain glitch to a life-threatening problem on your hands. Should you be scared of hallucinations? The answer to that question pretty much lies in what you experience. For a glitch in the frontal lobe which results in a brief visual apparition, there might be no cause for alarm. In case of severe hallucination, some of the most basic things to do would be to avoid triggers like psychedelic drugs and excess coffee. Yes, coffee has been proven to be a hallucinogenic agent when taken in excess. Seek medical help also. You might want to be sure that there is no history of mental illness, schizophrenia, dementia, or anything related to that in your lineage. Also be sure to stay around healthy communities and avoid toxic environments or people. There is only so much negativity that the mind can take. So be sure to detoxify your environment from time to time. Pray also. Lots of people who identify as religious find comfort and some form of relief in communicating with their creator. It's my hope that this video has brought some hope and clarity to you if you have had hallucinations or are going through a rough place at the moment. If you enjoyed this, then be sure to stick around for the next mind-stretching video that we have. Thank you for watching.